Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. If you are alive in this world, you're going to encounter opposition. For example, you may be working and you hear good news. You're up for a promotion at work, but so too are a few other individuals. You have opposition. You may be purchasing a home and found the perfect home for your family, but someone else has also made an offer on that home. There's opposition. And that's fine and well. Whenever we try to accomplish something in this world, normally there is opposition. But I want to speak tonight about a different type of opponent. One that is not uh, normal or natural or human, but a demonic opponent spiritual opposition and here's the thing that we need to understand and this evening for the most part I'm speaking to believers we need to realize something that when we agree to serve God we hear his voice we read in his word what he wants us to do and we submit to it there is going to be opposition and if we don't know the principles for spiritual warfare. If we don't know how to overcome this opposition, then we are going to find ourselves being defeated. And for those who are not believers, here's what frequently happens. You don't even realize you're in a battle. You're living your life, and things are going from your perspective perhaps okay. You have a good job. You have wonderful children. You are thankful for your wife and you go through your life relatively comfortable, content, marginally happy. But here's the problem. All of that, because you haven't found great opposition, you've been moderately successful or perhaps very successful. But here's the problem. All of that may have left you totally unprepared for eternity. And when you go before the judgment of God, you're going to realize something, that you have been deceived, that you're not ready for the age to come, to enter into the kingdom of God. And everything that you had, everything that you thought was important, all of that in a moment, it's over. And now you are in a new domain, a spiritual world that you have not given any thought to. And you're going to find not opposition, but you will find eternal defeat. In other words, what we're speaking tonight about is very, very important. It has implication, serious implications for this world, but also for eternity well take out your bible and look with me to the book of matthew and chapter 14 the book of matthew and chapter 14 now this scripture over and over we see the word immediately and this speaks about something that is urgent but when we look at this we may not see the urgency but here's the reason why the urgency is from a spiritual vantage point. It is not from a human perspective. And when we read here, Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to begin in verse 22, the first thing it says, and immediately Yeshua, he compelled his disciples to enter into the boat and to go before him, and I would circle this next phrase, 
to the other side. Now, if you're familiar with the writings of not only Scripture, but also other historical writings from that period of time, other writings that had a spiritual connotation to it. This phrase, the other side, almost without exception, has to do with the other world, the demonic world, the spiritual world. And here's a sad truth. Most people don't think about it. And the problem is this. This is exactly what the enemy wants. He doesn't want you to know that there is a supernatural opponent. He doesn't want you to believe in the demonic truth of this fallen world. He doesn't want you to know that there is a spiritual demonic opponent that is working against you. He wants to deceive you, as we've said many times. He is the father of lies. He practices deceit. And what he wants is for you to go before the judgment seat of God totally unprepared and unaware of this spiritual world, of this demonic influence that people are being deceived by and led into, and hear this, eternal destruction. And it's only faith in Messiah and the truth that he reveals that can help us, help us successfully to be overcomers, to have victory in this world over the schemes of the enemy, and here's the key, and find prosperity in the world to come. What's that? What's that prosperity in the world to come? To be a recipient of the promises of God. So once again, look at our verse, verse 22. And immediately, Yeshua compelled his disciples to enter into the boat and to go before him to the other side until he release the crowds. Now, we see over and over, everywhere that Yeshua went, there were crowds pursuing him, following him. And this is the case. But now there's going to be an exception. We're going to see initially that he's going to be alone. Look carefully. He dismissed the crowds in verse 23, and having dismissed the crowds, he went up into a mountain by himself. He is alone. He's in this mountain, and oftentimes mountain, when it appears, especially in the New Testament, not in a prophetic context, mountain, has to do with a different perspective. And what is he going to do here? Well, we read, he went up into a mountain by himself, and here's the key, to pray. Prayer gives us a very different perspective. In fact, prayer gives us a proper perspective. So realize this. If prayer is not the priority of your life, you are going to be seeing things incorrectly. You are going to be seeing things from the position of deceit. You are not going to know the truth. You're not going to have the vantage point that you need to live a life that is pleasing to God, that overcomes the schemes and the, the evil plans of the enemy. So prayer is important. So Messiah, he dismiss, dismisses the crowds and he commands his disciples to go before him to the other side. Verse 23, second part. And it came about evening. Now, there's a change in location that's important. A change in location biblically speaks about a new matter, a new issue. And when evening comes, we usually see that is in reference to a lack of understanding. And we're going to see that from the disciples. Constantly, those disciples who knew Messiah, who were taught by him, but nevertheless, because of a tendency, what is that tendency? To not believe. 
not to utilize faith and what is faith as I've said so frequently there is a relationship between faith and the truth of God faith is submitting to the truth of Scripture and one of the wisest things that you can do is to pursue biblical truth the second most important thing is after you discover it reveal it in his word then then to apply it to your life those two things seek it and to apply it to your life implement it in your behavior that is how you overcome this spiritual opposition so he goes up onto the mountain by himself to pray and it comes about evening time and alone he was there verse 24 but the boat now the boat is tied to the disciples and remember he sends them to the other side and that if we understand the biblical language we understand the context of scripture we know that they are heading into the enemy's domain they are going to encounter and we'll see this in a moment opposition How's that? But the boat is already in the midst of the sea. And notice what's happening in this boat. It is being tossed by the waves. For there was, and what's emphasized here is this next phrase, it is something that is against something that is contrary. And what is that? Well, we read that there is a contrary wind tossing this this boat so what's happening these disciples they are under attack you say it's the wind that's true but realize the enemy also can use the natural very important the enemy frequently uses the natural we saw a few weeks ago that our enemy is oftentimes a human vessel of the the devil and therefore these disciples they are experiencing opposition and not just normal opposition because as we read it says and at the fourth watch of the night so this is late now when we look earlier on go back to the middle of verse 23 it says it was becoming evening so dusk or a little bit later than that and traditionally there are four watches throughout the night each watch is three hours so now they are in the time set between the ninth and the twelfth hour in other words they have rode and they have attempted to get to that other side probably something that they thought they could do in an hour or so and now what's happening hour after hour after hour has passed they are in the midst of this opposition this is not a normal occurrence this is not something that they've experienced frequently in their life to want to go to the other side they were fishermen but notice because this this boat was being tossed by this contrary wind what happens well we're going to see that these individuals they are fearful these disciples verse 25 and it's in this fourth watch that Yeshua he went by them meaning he was approaching them walking and notice this walking on the sea now most of us we're familiar with this miracle we see it in other gospel accounts from the bible as well when he goes walking on the water now that is not a normal human activity remember he's fully man but he's fully god and what we find is with him all things are possible and that's good why well we have a supernatural opponent we are going to encounter opposition 
And it's only through our Lord and Savior, our teacher, our Lord, one who with him all things are possible, including victory. Through him and the teachings that he gave, the truth that he revealed, we can have victory. We can know prosperity, meaning this. See, God is a blessed God. And the enemy, and I'm speaking about Satan, he doesn't want us to receive God's goodness, his blessings. He wants us to experience curse and eternal death. That's what motivates him. But Messiah, notice in the midst of this fearful experience, this opposition that they were experiencing, the disciples, Messiah comes to them walking upon the sea. And keep reading. Look, if you would, to verse, verse 26. And the disciples, seeing him upon the sea, walking, what were they? Well, they were troubled. Now, this word means not uh, they may be fearful, but this word is oftentimes used for that which is confusing. They were troubled. They were confused by what they saw. They didn't understand, first, that it was their Lord and Savior. They didn't realize why he was coming to them. They didn't perceive things properly. Now, remember something. What was Messiah doing before this? Praying. And we don't see in any of the accounts of this event, whether it's in Matthew's gospel, Mark's gospel, whatever, we don't see that the disciples prayed. Why? Because even though they were encountering spiritual opposition, they didn't discern it as such. They didn't turn in prayer. They just thought they, by their sheer effort of rowing and rowing and rowing, that they could arrive at the destination. But they couldn't. They had spent hours and hours in the middle of the Sea of Galilee trying to get to that other side. And now, Yeshua, he is coming to them, walking on the water, and they, when they see him, they are troubled, saying that this is, or this one is, a ghost. And from fear, they cried out. What's the next word? Immediately. Immediately, he was saying to them, that is Yeshua, Jesus was saying to them, be of courage. Now, this is a command, and he says it in a very personal way. You, speaking to the disciples, you be of courage. And then notice the, the last part of this verse. Very significant. And one of the things that, that bothers me is when translators do not translate what's written. We have the word ego ami, two words, I am. That's what it says. Now, we remember that this word or phrase, I am, relates to God. What we see here, and the scripture is going to, to show this, document this in a moment. But this one walking upon the water unto them, he was not a ghost. He is the great I am. That is, he is God among them. And they were confused. They did not understand this spiritual resource, his presence, their relationship with him. They didn't realize the resource spiritually that they could utilize against this opposition. And that is not an exception. That is how most individuals, certainly those who are not believers, they have no resources spiritually. They are going to be easily defeated and unprepared for the age to come. What happens after death? But if you are a believer, you have great resource, abundant resource. 
that which is unlimited, that which is greater than the one in the world. But the problem is this. We tend not to emphasize this or understand what we can do with him, with this new covenant relationship with the Son of God. So Messiah comes. He says, you know, do not fear. Be of courage for, end of verse 27, I am. And notice the relationship in the word. He says, I am. And then he says, do not fear. But Peter, it's always Peter, isn't it? But Peter answered him, said, Lord, if. Now, this is a word of doubt. If it is you, command me to come to you upon the water. Now, perhaps that was a good thing to say. And Messiah, he agreed, verse 29, and he said, come. And going down from the boat, this is Peter, going down from the boat, he was walking, literally he walked upon the water to come to Yeshua. So all well and fine, but keep reading verse 30. Now, it's very important that we have the right perspective, that we focus, that we look at what we ought to look at and not what we ought not. And who should we be looking at? Yeshua. For his guidance, his instruction, his presence, following him, walking to him. But notice what it says. But, but Peter, after coming down from the boat, it says he was walking on the water. He was coming to Yeshua, verse 30. But, but seeing the strong wind, and the strong wind made him to fear. Now, when we fear the things of this world, when we fear the opposition, what's going to happen to us? Notice the principle that this word is teaching. Peter, he was looking at that strong wind. He feared and he began to sink and he cried out saying, Lord, save me. Now, here's what's so sad. Peter didn't have to sink. He didn't have to give priority to that wind, those waves, or anything else. All he had to do was focus on his Lord. Go to him. Walk in obedience to, drawing near to our Lord and Savior, the Messiah, the one who is our master. That's what a disciple does. But Peter, what was his problem? Verse 31. Yeshua immediately stretching out his hand, he took hold of him and says to him, listen to this, you are of little faith. For why did you doubt? Doubting is never going to bring about a spiritual prosperity. It's not going to bring us into the fulfillment of what God has for us. Do not doubt. What's the alternative? Believe. Have faith. Remember what he says. You are of little faith. And because of that, this doubt came. And what happens to him? He began to sink and Messiah saved him. Verse 32. And after coming in, they came into the boat. What happens? Immediately. The wind was, was cut off. It ceased. And what did they do when they saw this? It says, and they, in the boat, they came to worship him, saying, truly, truly, he is the Son of God. Now, notice that. We see Messiah doing two things. Walking on the water controlling the wind, and they understand. This is just not some rabbi. This is not just a prophet. This is not some miracle worker. But this is, and don't miss this, he is 
the Son of God. Until you realize that truth, nothing good from an eternal standpoint, from a kingdom perspective, is going to happen in your life. You need to understand he is the Son of God. Verse 34. And, and passing through, they came to the land of Ger Gerasim. And knowing, who's knowing the men of that place, knowing what did they do? They sent in all the regions around that place, and they brought to him everyone, all. And here's another example of something that's so misfortunate. Because I looked at 28 different translations, and they all have sick or disease or ill. One of those three responses, all 28, referring to the sick. But if you look at this word, and in Strong's Concordance, and you can check this out, it's number 2560, and it speaks about that which is evil, that which is contrary to the will of God, that which is of an evil spirit or demonic. And what did he do? They brought to him everyone having evil, one of these evil spirits, and they beseeched him in order only that they could touch. Touch what? the corner of his garments. And as many as touched this, touched his garments, it says, they were healed. What happens? They overcome evil. They found victory in their life. And what was this? Well, the him, as many of your Bibles say, this is the corner of this very special garment known as a titsit, as a prayer shawl and at the corners there's these tassels and these tassels represent the commandments of God don't trust me look at the book of Numbers chapter 15 and verses 37 through 41 what it says here is that they wanted healing they wanted to overcome evil how by obeying God doing his will and that's what prosperity is. When we make a decision to obey him, to overcome the opposition, how? By doing the will of God. When we are focused upon his truth, we won't be confused. We're not going to be troubled by the things of this world. We're going to know victory. And to God be the glory. Amen. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Shalom from Israel.